Welcome. In this video we're going to build a language switch which is essentially a button or a small menu that will bring us to a different language. We would like to implement it in such a way that we will stay on the page that we are on and also that the menu is configurable via admin. Now implementing a language switch which brings you to the home page in a different language is not very difficult. Essentially, the Django docs give a lot of information about that. Let's see about that. Um, the link is in the written tutorial, as usual, and um, here you can see how you can change the language. So let's start by implementing a view that essentially does this. Let's go over to our views.py and start by adding a view set language from URL with a language code that we'll be able to define to redirect us to the home page in a different language. So first thing to check is, is this language code valid? Um, and we do that by checking the languages in our settings and then the language code for that. And if the language code in our method is not in there, then we just redirect to the home page in the current language. If it is a valid language code, then we define a next URL, which is essentially the home page in the current language, in the language code that is requested, uh, which is slash language code slash. This is the way that i18n patterns of URLs are composed. You can see that as well in the Django docs, how they work. Uh, essentially, they prefix the language code to the URL of the page, and in this case, this is the home page. Then going back to the example in the Django docs, what we do then is activate the language that was requested by using the function activate from the module translation. Then we define the response where we want to go to, which is to redirect to this next URL. We set a cookie, which make sure that in the session that we are in, the language um, will be persisted. And finally, we return the response. This will bring us to the home page in a different language. But if we want to stay on the page that we were on, the first thing we have to do is to retrieve that page. So let's first delete that and retrieve the page that we were on. And we can do that by using HTTP referrer, which is a part of the meta field of the request. Let's look that up. Here it is in the Django docs. You have the HTTP request meta, and then HTTP referrer is right here, which is the referring page, meaning the, pa the page where actually the view was initiated. So we give that the value previous, and that will be our starting point. Now, if for some reason this doesn't work, then we go back to our original scenario, which is to go back to the home page and have setting the next URL again to the home page in the requested language. If we did find a previous, however, then let's first check if the language code that we want to set is equal to the current language. And we can use the function get language for that. Django supplies that. Here it is. The link is again in the written tutorial. And this basically retrieves the current, currently selected language code. So if the language code that we requested is already the language code that we currently have, then there is no sense going any further and we can directly go back to the page that we came from. But let's suppose that's not the case and we really have to switch the language. Now then, there are two possibilities here. Um, First, if we would have a, let's call it regular URL, um, which is composed via i18n patterns. Let's look that up again. Um, as I said, it's just a matter of prefixing the language code to a given URL. So in that case, going to a different language for the same page would essentially mean just switching the prefix. That works well for all URLs who are, co who are composed in that way. But we are using Wagtail Trends, um, as you might remember from a previous tutorial. And the pages, the URL of the pages in Wagtail Trends are composed in a different way. So just switching the language code will not work there. And I'll show you how to find a way to solve that. The first thing to do is to 
try and find the path of the, the URL path of the previous page. There is a function in Python for that. It's called URL paths. The link is in the written tutorial. You can look it up and it does what uh, it's what it's supposed to do, which is to find the path of the previous URL. Now our strategy, strategy is going to be to find the page that belongs to this path. Once we have that page, then we can translate that page in a different language using functionality of Wagtail Trans and redirect to that page. So essentially we start by looking up this URL path in the objects, the translatable page objects of Wagtail Trans. However, there's one slight complication, which is that Wagtail Trans prefixes the URL of the root page, the root page of the site, before any other URL in the site. Um, this is something that you essentially don't find out from the documentation. You have to really dive into the way that URLs are composed in Wagtail Trans, and then you find out that this prefix is there. So when, when we're trying to find a URL in the Wagtail Trans pages, then we have to prefix this as well. So what we do is for the current site, we find the root and then we prefix the URL path of that root to the path that we have now composed. Now to find the current site for the current request, there is a method for that in Wagtail. And that is here in the documentation. It is the function find for request. You have to use that. So let's do what we just said. Here we use that function, find for request, to find the current root um, with the field root page and then the URL path of that root page. And we prefix that before the previous path that we just found. Um, here you use a, we use a slice uh, notation because we want to prevent a double slash because this ends in a slash and this begins with a slash and we don't want any double slashes. So we just remove one slash. And now finally, we are able to retrieve the previous page by just looking it up in the translatable page objects using the field URL path. So now that we have the page that we came from, how do we get to a page in a different language? Now there we have to look at the model of translatable page a bit deeper. So let's do that. Um, here it is um, on GitHub. You see that a translatable page is essentially a pointer to a page in Wagtail plus something which is called canonical page, which is a reference to another page and a language. So um, the concept is that the canonical page is the page in the default language and any page in Wagtail Trans points to a default page in a default language. And it also has a language, which is the language that this particular page is in. So the way to go from one language to another is via this canonical page. So let's try and first find that canonical page for this previous page that we just found. Now, the way to do that is that, okay, if that page is already canonical, and this is a property that is also part of the, the um, definition of translatable page, um, then we have found this canonical page already. But if it's not, then we will use this field canonical page, which is part of the model of translatable page. Now we've found the canonical page. Now we still need to find the language. And we can do that just simply by looking up the language object of the language class in Wagtail Trends using the language code in our method. Now we have all the ingredients to find our translated page and we use the following line. Next URL is a, uh, will be equal to canonical page URL if the language code that we um, were looking for is equal to the canonical language um, because in that case we need the canonical page. If it's not, then we find the translatable page object for which the language is equal to the language that we just found and the canonical page is equal to the canonical page that we just found. And from that object, we retrieve the URL. So now we know which URL to go to in the case that our page is part of the Wagtail tree. But it is still very well possible that this is not the case 
because uh, if we were not able to find a translatable page or not able to find a language, then we end up in a different situation, which is that we are back to our regular URLs, meaning that we use the I18N patterns. And in that case, it's a bit simpler to retrieve the next URL to go to. We can use a function which is called translate URL, and this function is supplied by Django. It is part of the Django implementation of set language. Uh, this is part of the Django docs. And if you dive into the implementation, essentially what this function is doing, it's using this translate URL functionality. The function translate URL essentially takes out the current prefix and puts in the prefix of the language code. Now, as I said, this will work for URLs that are composed via I18N. It wouldn't have worked with the URLs that we were using within Wagtail Trends. Now, if for some reason this formula will not work, what translate URL will do is it will return the previous URL. This is part of the definition of translate URL. So if we find that, if we find that this next URL is equal to the previous URL, then we know that this hasn't worked. So in that case, we just go back to our old scenario, which is to put the next URL to the home page. Now that's it. We still have a number of imports to do. Let's do that. First of all, we need to import URLs uh, for the function that we had here. Translate URL, it's part of URLs module. Then we need settings to retrieve the language code. We need HTTP re response dot redirect, obviously. Um, we need translation. We need URL pass, which is this Python function that we use to retrieve the path of the previous um, URL. We need site, which we used here to retrieve the um, URL of the, of the root page. And finally, from Wagtail Trends, we need this translatable page and language. That concludes the implementation of our method here of our view. So now we need a URL which points to our view. So let's put that in our urls.py. I see we don't have that yet. So let's create a urls.py file urls.py and put some content in it. Let's insert a line which points to our function set, URL, set language from URL, uh, give it a name set language from URL. And as a URL, we will use the language code as a parameter. So that if we want to set a specific language, we just use the language code as a parameter and invoke our function using that parameter. Let's do the imports. We have to import path and we have to import our function get language, set language from URL. Now we still need to add these URLs to our project urls.py. So let's go over there. Um, urls.py, here we are, and let's add them here. Um, in this way, we include the CMS URLs. And now, uh, maybe if we would have more URLs in CMS.urls, we wouldn't have done that in this way, because now we sort of tie this CMS URLs to our language. We could have done that in a different app, for example, but for now, this suits our needs, so we'll leave it like this. Now, if you want to switch languages, for example, to French, then we will use the URL language slash fr slash, and that will bring us to the French language at the same page. So essentially, we can put this URL language.fr, language.en at any place in our site, um, and we will do that um, via a configurable menu in our editor. So let's go over there. Here we are, let's go to our page and let's go to admin. And then go to our menus. Here we have our menus. We only have three of them. Let's add a language menu. And add some items there. Now, first one will be English. 
with a URL of simply the language code. And we don't need any sub menus. We do want an image because it would be nice to have a flag there. So let's download that. Um, let's see, we have a flag here. Yeah. So let's have the English flag there. And we always want to show that. Another one for French. And a link URL of FR. And let's try and pick a French flag. And then finally a Dutch. With a Dutch flag. And that's fine. Now we still need to attach this language menu to our main menu. So let's add that to our main menu. Articles, account, and let's do that at the end. Title, language. Link URL is language. Language, not really important for you because we will not really go there. Title of submenu is not relevant. Image, let's choose an image. Upload, choose a file. Let's use that one. Upload it. Great, and that's it. Now, what will happen with this URL? I think we made a, I made a mistake here because um, we use the language codes here. Yes, we did, but um, this will not work as a URL. So we, in fact, we have to put language in front of this uh, because that is the URL that this item is going to use. Uh, otherwise, uh, what will happen is Django will strip this off and find this parameter and then use that for the function. So we have to do that for all of them. Let's correct that. Sorry for that. That was a small thinking mistake. And put this here as well. Language slash NL. Yeah, this should work much better. Now, that concludes the menu, I think. So let's see how this works out. Here we have our page. We see that we have the small globe, but we see that we don't have any submenu. So something has gone wrong. Let's go back to admin. And to our menus, and I think I know what I've done wrong. In main, when I put in the language menu, where is it here? I still have to indicate what the title of the submenu is going to be. So obviously that is going to be language, which is the menu that we just created. So now this should work better. There we are, we do have the languages and we can go from one language to another. Now this is better, but obviously the test that we want to do is if we want, if we are on a specific page, like for example, the French page, and we want to go to the English page, do we stay on the same page? Yes, we do. Great, now Dutch, Dutch as well. Well, I think it works the way we intended. This concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.